Trump Truth Commission. This is T plus 14. This is Thursday and November 19th, I think. Uh, we are now uh, more than two weeks past the election. The president has not conceded. Um, there's still a lot of misinformation out there. So this one is focusing on, uh, you know, the, the basis probably being presidential stuff, but he's repeating things that are now said on by uh, congressional representatives and, of course, by Fox News. So this is an interview with some of my faves. Um, we got uh, Representative Jim Jordan, Representative Matt Gates. Um, and Katie McEnany, and Katie McEnany all being interviewed by uh, Sean Hannity. So, um, but you know, it's it's a sad thing. I call it. Uh, it's essentially seagull uh, politics, really. Um, it's basically where they you know basically flood around, kind of take a bag, rip it apart. Um, you know, crap all over it, and then uh, say the bag is all messy, they flap their wings, and then they fly into the next thing. Meanwhile, somebody's fact-checking or trying to use honest information or straightforward stuff is mess left with this messy bag and trying to put it together, and it just looks terrible. So that's kind of the Fox approach. Um, it's sad, um, but that's what happened. So I'm going to give you the basics. Um, there is a the, the Fox News representation, and then the facts are coming up in two clips, and then I'll go into the details. He, that Secretary of State in Georgia is more interested in, uh, in lying and attacking Lindsey Graham and Doug Collins than he is about the thousands and thousands of votes we're finding a couple of weeks after the election. Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger told Jeff Hollinger today the hand count is producing convincing data showing the election was sound and legal. The Trump campaign inadvertently got everything they wanted. Because we ended up doing, in effect, a hand recount, a hand retally during this audit process. It's not a 90% confidence vote or 95. It's a 99.999 because we counted every single ballot. Uh, but they are doing a full recount and an audit. And, and uh, so, you know, hopefully they get the accurate results. No one wants false results. So that's, that, that shouldn't be assumed. So let's get into the classic sequence of things, basically. You got a partial truth, false conclusion. Spreading fear based on misinformation and then undermining faith in the election system. It's a sad sequence, but that's essentially what they're doing. Chairman, it was a 9,000 vote discrepancy that was signed off by two officials in DeKalb County, Georgia, and would not have been discovered but for the Republican observer. Well, we didn't have observers at most of the states that, whose legal statutory language says you can have one. For on Twitter. One of our monitors discovered a 9,626 vote error in the DeKalb County hand count, Schaefer wrote. State election manager Gabe Sterling says, yes, that happened, but was quickly corrected shortly afterward. Chairman Schaefer was factual in his thing that that was an error, it was caught, and it was fixed, and that does not affect the outcome. So that element is uh, not reported, basically, uh, or focused on. So Sean Henry just brings up the 9,000 vote discrepancy, but that was found, was uh, 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 fixed, and it is no longer a problem. It was done relatively quickly and factually. So uh, that is the situation. However, now you take that information and you spin the type, uh, some type of fear out of it. Oh. Sean Davis, Federalist, writes on Twitter, Democrats, the media accused George W. Bush of stealing the uh, election it, that he was involved in in 2000. They some uh, spread a conspiracy theory. Bush was involved in 9-11. They accused Bush of intentionally lying about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, claiming electronic voting machines stole the election for Bush in 04. That was Democrats. Then, of course, they spread the hoax that President Trump was a Russian agent. Okay, so now that partial truth and partial information is now uh, set the stage. We've got, we're already ready to be uh, frightened, and here comes Sean. He swoops in, starts flapping his wings, and crapping all over everything. And now it's really frightening what is happening in our system. Just listen to Sean. They don't care about the thousands of previously uncounted votes we're discovering just this week in Georgia. They don't care about the two men charged in California. Why? Submitting 8,000 ballot applications for fake or dead voters. Okay. Editorial note, we do care about uh, massive voter fraud. Don't seem to care about the impending possible recounts in Wisconsin after allegations over voter fraud there carried out by election officials in two heavily Democratic counties. In fact, they don't care about partisan election observers blocked from polling locations. They don't care about the chaos causing widespread main in voting and by the way mail in voting and they don't care about outdated voter rolls and the lack of voter ID. 
They don't care about security. They don't care about the accuracy of voting machines. Okay, so now he's at the stage, um, and now he's going to frighten you with a whole bunch of information, and it's going to just leave you petrified, so buckle up. You wouldn't know it by our election systems because they now represent a train wreck, but only in certain states. They don't care about any of it because they got the result they wanted. And for them, that's all that matters. They're not valuing freedom, fairness, truth, equal justice, or the rule of law. We've watched that for four straight years. What they want is power and, of course, to slander Donald Trump uh, every second of every day. And that leaves states vulnerable to fraud and to abuse. And how can anyone have confidence in any of this? All right, so all that information to basically a false uh, sense of skepticism and, uh, and fear about the, the integrity of the election system. So it's a sad thing to, to see all that information used that way. I'll point out that not once does he bring in an election expert to actually discount that or have a logical discussion about these types of things. There are answers for a lot of this stuff. So, um, But that's not what they do. They just want us to spin the fear, which is sad. Um, now you get to hear the others doing that is the exact same thing. And these are people to either, either elect or represent our us as a federal government. Kaylee McEnany, she's a White, White House spokesperson. Uh, Representative Matt Gates, he's a, a, a Florida congressman. And Representative Jim Jordan, he's an Ohio congressman. These people represent us, not the Republicans in their states. They represent us. And here's what they're doing. They're mimicking Fox News. And he's absolutely right about this. If you're not verifying signatures, if you're following the rules of Stacey Abrams, who refused to concede, who still thinks she's the governor of Georgia. So there's your nugget of uh, truth, actually. And to quote Madeline Kahn from Blazing Saddles, it's true, it's true. So that is great. However, yes, she did not uh, formally concede, but she, uh, Stacey Abrams did formally, uh, formally acknowledge that uh, Kemp won the election. So that's only a partial truth. How good, in fact, is your recount? A recount which, in fact, as you noted, found three tranches of ballots previously undiscovered, all of which happened to favor Donald Trump's uh, uh, chances eventually and increase his vote totals. So how good is that recount, uh, as the president has noted? You know, so there you go, partial truth and a lot of fear uh, based on uh, some information, but uh, not the full context. So basically, uh, errors were found. They found uh, missing votes. They brought them into the tally system. Now they've, been, they've done a full audit, and they're doing a full recount, and they're going to be re uh, reporting that results. That's what, that's what they do. <laughs> now Kaylee uses a classic temp uh, technique she and Trump and others use, but really she does. She's going to wave a piece of paper in front of you, and that is very official because this paper has print on it, and, it, and so it's and it led, it's an actual formal legal document. So uh, pretty exciting stuff when she does that. So we filed this petition in Wisconsin for a recount in two counties. It's exactly as you described it. One of those counts says in, in uh, the state of Wisconsin, if you are indefinitely confined, you can cast an absentee ballot without showing voter ID. Uh, last election, 72,000 people did that. This election, 200. 40,000 people did that, presumably using COVID and fears of COVID as an excuse. So it was a way to circumvent voter ID. So yes, highest voter turnout in history, and yes, during a global pandemic, and yes, certain measures were altered to make things safer for the common voter. That's good. Will anyone else repeat this exact same thing? Let's hear Matt. We got a lot of questions about Pennsylvania, whether it's the spike in 90-year-olds, more of them registering in the last year to vote than in the prior four years combined, including two election years. So he did it. Matt is now focusing on the frightening factor of 90-year-old voter registration. And he's making that a thing. It is not a thing. It's just evidence of high voter turnout. But here what he brings up next, and that's where it gets into. Set the stage, and that'll make you frightened. I think that when we really dig into the circumstantial data and into the real data, we'll find out that there was ballot laundering going on here. But here's the thing, Sean. If we can flip Georgia by showing that there was not accurate counting there, then I think it pulls back the whole veneer that the yep. media and others hey, Matt, have tried to put on these on these mail-in ballots. Have you been watching this? So then he gets into lack of observation. That is false. And Sean says that as well, that uh, many states didn't allow observers. All states have allowed observers, and they followed the rules. And when uh, they were legally challenged, one of the very few, and maybe the only legal victory that Trump had was challenging the observation rule in the state of Pennsylvania. And that's kind of what he's talking about. Yes, they were 100 feet away. That is tough to observe. I get it. The, and the judge uh, did allow them to get closer and still stay, you know, use uh, COVID and social distancing guidelines. So, um, so that is misrepresentation. They were allowed. They were allowed to get closer due to the lawsuit. 
when you pair that with the lack of observation, it really raises more questions. Observation of ballots should not be a game of hide and seek, right? You shouldn't have to be, you know, 100 feet away trying to engage in a signature match. This ought to be precise and it ought to be clear. And we're getting anything from precision and clarity out of Georgia and Pennsylvania in particular right now. Okay, now Jim Jordan gets to weigh in and make you frightened as well, and he uh, starts uh, talks about states uh, in key key swing, swing states stopping counting, and that sounds scary and nefarious. It's not. They did their full counts, um, but he's doing the exact same tactics, taking nuggets of information, but they're not the the whole truth. But why only a couple of uh, states? Both your states did great. Why, why yeah. these important states, you know, why here? Why only here and we're here and not in other places? Well, it seems to be the states that stopped counting on election night that are swing states that have all the problems. The ones that kept counting, like Florida, like Ohio, we didn't have any problems. So all the states that sort of halted the count for a while and then picked it up later, that seems to be all the states that have the problems. So let's make sure we get to the bottom. Okay, now I hand off to Matt to actually say some partial information as well. And uh, using the REO speed wagon uh, tactic, I heard it from a friend who heard it from a friend who heard it from another. You've been messing around. That's essentially it. Uh, Donald, Donald Trump heard it, he tweeted it, others heard that, and they, they repeated it, but it was false information. Process. We start to see these irregularities like in Wayne County, where there are concerns that there are more cast ballots than there are actual voters. So that is false. Uh, Forbes magazine and many other uh, folks fact checked that there were not more cast ballots than there were registered voters. And in, in that county, the largest city uh, entity is Detroit. Um, so basically, they had about 350,000 um, uh, votes, and that's about half of the uh, re registered voters. Um, there were some precincts that had some weird discrepancies, but those are fixed. But there was, it's just false to say that more people voted than were registered. And they said it, they repeated it, they said it again. Okay, so all that sets the stage, and now you kind of get into really what uh, they're, they're wanting to do. They're wanting to sow doubt in the whole election process. They're wanting to sow doubt in the mail-in uh, voting process. And mail-in voting uh, is, has been proven to be a safe and effective um, uh, method, and there is no wide-scale uh, voter fraud that's been proven. Um, but basically, they're just trying to undercut that and undermine your confidence in the system. And as a result, here we are over two weeks later waiting to have the uh, people, the president of the United States of America, agree to the results and have the Republicans who we elected actually agree, agree that um, Trump should concede. And so this whole thing is spun and uh, people are buying into it, unfortunately. And that is only exacerbated by a system that reduces the ability to have real-time verification, like a human being standing there actually voting. And I do predict that if the Democrats get more power in Washington, they'll do everything they can to try to keep that power by eroding the integrity of the vote. So that's the end of it. So you have millions of people watching Fox News and Sean Hannity's the highest rated show or was close to it. <laughs> and basically, what did they get? They got a pundit, uh, you know, striking fear. They got two representatives in the uh, United States Congress uh, striking fear using partial information. They got the spoke, uh, the White House spokesperson, the one of the closest people to the president of the United States, using partial information and false information. And at the end of that, if you just watch that, you're very frightened. You only have partial information. You don't have the full facts. So sad thing. And um, anyway, we just got to call it out. And anyway, here in music. Oh